Welcome everyone. Today's day 167, or maybe eight. Make it Songbringer. And today I'm working on the alpha build again. Tomorrow I'll also be working on the alpha build. Been working on it all morning. What's really great news is I got to watch my friend play the game last night, and um, I wrote down 30 new bugs. Basically, they got to get fixed. So, um, yeah, I got actually I got 35 of them last night, and so now I'm down to what 31 or 30. So I picked, I fixed about four or five so far. Um, but yeah, these should mostly be quick fixes. We'll see. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start just ripping through these as fast as I can right now. Um, so first one is when my friend played, he hit the, the controller button once, and it somehow it skipped both the, the first preview build notice and um, the first screen. So I'm going to fix that. <clears throat> There's this bit here where it runs the preview scene. I just realized I forgot. Oh my god. Xcodes jump to. Um, Alright, so where's that text? Here it is, preview build. So I'm just going to change this to alpha build. There. Cool. So now it says alpha build instead of preview build. So people know the second they start playing it that it's the alpha build, not the preview build. So we've still got preview build set to 1. So it's going to build that. I want to go to my settings and make sure it doesn't skip the menu right now. I'm going to plug in my controller. This is just a little Super Nintendo style gamepad I use quite often. It's my favorite gamepad. Oh man, it's not working. Okay. I'm ready to try this. So basically if I press the button twice, I should skip through, accidentally skip through. So I go... Yeah, so there I press it twice rapidly in a succession, which can easily happen by accident when you're doing that. And it, it, and it skips over that. So, um, <clears throat> wait, let's try one more thing. Let's try just pressing it once and holding it, because that might be part, part of it. Yeah, if I press it once and hold it, it's fine. It's So it's not that it's needed to clear that out. I think it's the title scene we're talking about here. Hold start time. Hi, Ethan. Welcome to the stream today, man. So when it updates, it's looking for input has buttons down. What's this key repeat delay? Hmm. No, oh, it's not this. It's not title scene. It's scene zero that we're talking about. Yeah, scene zero, update. This should be where it's, yeah, if input get held code. And we also need to know if it's greater than a certain bit of start time. So we've got start time equals kit duration. So if input get held code and the current time. Here. We've already got this, so we might as well just use that there. So if elapsed is greater than 0 0.0, say 1.0, 1 second, then it can only, and then and only then can it go to the next one. Good for you, man. Okay, so now I'm going to go and do the same thing. I'm going to press the two buttons in rapid succession, see if it still skips. Good. Okay, so I press it twice in a row. And it it was fine. It still played this the scene, the main scene. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. Um, I just noticed that if I hold the key code, it doesn't quite work.
I thought there was a reset held key code. Oh, it's yeah, reset held key code. Ah. Oh, it's probably because it is of that right there. <clears throat> Hi, Moringia. Uh, Ethan, I'm working on the alpha build. I got a list of 30 bugs I found from my friend last night. And so I'm going through them as fast as I can. Cool, man. Good for you. Way to make some characters. Okay, so let's see if that worked. I'm going to press the button once quickly and then once again and hold it and it should reset that second held one. Yes, okay, that worked. Cool, so now it's very purposeful. You have to press the button um, purposefully for that to work. So good. Um, that's good enough. I'm going to go ahead and cross that one off my list. So. Okay, how many letters do I get? Yeah, that's the question my friend had. When he started the game, he was like, how many letters do I get when I'm... Okay, so we can we can do uh, some underscores. And... Let's see. There's something about the mega seed. There it is. Cool. So what I'll do is I'll make this mega seed um, have padded out, pad the whole string out with underscores for the number of letters in the code. Uh, Merengue, yeah, there's no, there's not going to be an open beta of the game. Sorry about that. Um, it's because I promised everyone in the Kickstarter beta versions. So it's a closed beta. I already committed to that to 750 different backers. So um, for me to change that now would be to basically invalidate the deal that they signed up for. So it would, wouldn't be very cool of me to create an open beta right now. So sorry about that, man. But uh, you can get in on the beta if you want at songbringer.com. <clears throat> so for int i equals zero, no i equals mega dot size, i is less than k number of like letters. What's the number of letters in the mega seed? Mega seed length, there it is. I is less than mega seed length, I plus plus. Mega dot push back an underscore. So there, while you're typing in this mega seed, you'll see um, some underscores. And then one last thing, it'll add on one more underscore. Okay, let's see if that works. That'd be cool if it does right off the bat. Okay, so I'm going to create a new game. Yeah, all right, cool. It's showing me how many letters I have basically to put. Only it's not quite working. I wanted to actually put this... Um, I wanted to add on that first. So mega plus equals f mod is less than one underscore otherwise space 
there. So it always adds that, even if it's a space. And then it pushes back the rest of the letters. Yeah, same thing, Marengia. Yeah, same thing. I already promised a lot of people that they would get to play the game because of their backing. So it would be really, really uncool of me to create a demo or an open beta. What's up, Zoc Games? I'm working on the alpha build right now, just um, ripping through my list. Yesterday I had my friend over in town, um, and he played the game, and I got to watch him play. It was actually very valuable to watch my friend play the game, and then just sit there and take notes. So I took like 30 different notes. I already got 35 different things I got to try and fix before this alpha version. So yeah, it's really, really busy. So there we go. That's more like it. Oh, cool, and it even adds that last letter if I want. Cool, all right, good. Now we can see how many letters we're inputting. Very cool. Nice, good for you, man. Okay, so that one's done. How many letters do I get? All right, next thing is the sword flux. This thing was crazy bright, too jumbly, and... Um, Whenever things zoom in, the shader is completely off. So, um, I'm going to put this one last, and now I'm going to just work on the sword flux being too bright and jumbly. So, I'm going to set the player, turn off. Turn off their item A. Take away the sword. Now I can go and just focus on this sword flux. There was too much screen shake. Okay, I can skip the menu now too. Put the player at the beginning. So what's making it too bright mostly is this shaft of light coming through from the ceiling. I can either go one or two ways. I can make the shaft of light darker or I can make the player, the, the white light that encompasses the player while he's getting the sword less opaque. <clears throat> Let's try making it less opaque, first of all. So it's the flux lift sword. Oh, thank. Okay, one thing. Let's turn down its screen shake. Shake, there's 3.09.
So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to half that. And the opacity of the white horizontal line. It's not the horizontal line, it's the, I guess it's the fade layer. Yeah, it's this big old fade layer that encompasses the entire screen, sets the scale. There it is. So all, this is the last one, 0.268 is the minimum it ever gets to. Should go at least a 0.2 less than that. So I'm looking at set opacity. I'm going to set these all 0.2 less. That one's only point. This one, same thing, zero. Let's see if that helps. <clears throat> yeah, Marengia, yeah, it's already been through green light. Yep, already passed. It passed in 10 days, so it was pretty quick. Um, yep, and uh, yeah, do you have some questions about green light or something? Okay, that didn't that didn't quite work out. It's two point one five here at the very end. Let's do zero, completely zero times here. Just one moment where it, where it did that. All right, yeah. Yep, it's the green light. And um, also it's gonna come out on a, it's gonna have a coming soon page on Steam. Probably tonight. I already got it approved by Steam and I just gotta go and um, click the button just so it'll say coming soon. It's a lot of work actually to get things set up on Steam. There's like a bajillion pages on their website. <clears throat> Yeah, like I said, it's it's um it's gonna come out. The link to it is actually gonna come out tonight. But I think I think if you're following it on this the green light, I think they'll give you a notice or something like that when the when this version comes out. But here's the here's the page for um so, there you go. Thanks, Arcane, and welcome, man. Welcome back. Okay, well, uh, wait, I gotta turn off the sword. Already did that, okay. All right, so yeah, all I'm trying to do here is make it a little less bright, because when I saw this played on my TV last night, the TV changes the colors a lot. Like, they get really banded. I don't know why, if anybody knows anything about cha fixing your the colors on your TV for playing games, I'd like to know. Why is it just flickering to white? Oh, it was probably this one that was minus too much. Yeah. 
This one could just be zero. That one could be zero. And this last one can be just a tiny bit. So it fades back in right before it's done. Oh, let's see if I can get that out. Uh, da, da, Not bad. I got an idea actually to fix the um, the zoom in on those lights. So the light system has this update where it updates all the lights. Yeah, here it is, render system animate lights. Goes through every single light, all of its positions, updates it all, and updates the shader with it. So When the lens is zooming in, when it's like zooming in the um, the screen, where does it do that? Move camera, here it is. Yeah, okay, so it actually sets the, the layer scale. So we can do the inverse on the positions. Let's get the actual overall scale. We'll call it layer scale equals area layer get scale. Now the main light Let's see if it just works with these lights first. I think if I multiply wind size dot width times layer scale. Same thing here with the Y the Y. Um I think this should no, this might have to be multiplied by the actual position or divide the position, something like that. I don't know. Nice, Maria. Cool, man. That sounds like a good game. I heard Titan Souls is awesome. I haven't played it yet myself. I have a whole list of games. Either I've bought them already and haven't played them, or they're in my wish list. So. Yeah, there's so many good games out, and good games coming out. There, so it did affect the positions, but it didn't quite do what we were thinking. So what, we, what it should happen here is the position dot x should add Yeah, so the layer scales really plays into the actual position, so it either adds or subtracts. So if layer scale is greater than or is not equal to 1.0, then we need to add or subtract from the X and the Y, depending on whether this position is to the left or the right of the center. So like pause.x plus equals something times um, wind size dot width times layer scale.
So if if pause.x is less than win size dot width times a half, then it's gonna be negative one. Otherwise it's one. And I guess we need to take layer scale Well, this is this is if layer scale is less than one. Take layer scale and subtract out one actually, or subtract out. I think it's 1.0 f minus layer scale. So if layer scale is say 0.5, then it's going to take the wind size dot width, which is say 400 pixels. And multiply it by a half, and that's how much it should offset the position. So that might that could push the light outside of the the current screen. What's up, Mr. Laguma? Divide by two. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where you're talking about, but I probably I maybe already did that. I'm not sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen Titan Souls. I've been checking it out. I, like I said, it's on my wish list. All right, so we got wind size dot height. I think that's about right. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing, but multiplying by 0.5 is faster than dividing by two. Um, all divide operations are slower than multiplication. So, at least to my knowledge on most CPUs. All right, so let's see what that does. If, it's, if it looks right, as it zooms in, it should stay, the lights should stay in the same position. No, it didn't work. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice. Well cool, that's that's quite an insightful eye you have for not doing code, man. Seems like you know um seems like you know about code. Alright, let's see. Let's see what that does as it zooms in. Okay, so it didn't even hit that breakpoint. That's that's why it's not working. So layer scale, maybe that's actually supposed to be layer scales. Yeah, it might be inverse. Yeah, it might be inverse. So let's let's see that. Layer scale is one. We'll try that. Yeah, totally, right? Uh, Arcane, I'm not gonna... No, on Steam you do not. Oh. Neighbor's car. Yeah, on Steam, you Steam has its own anti-piracy. Um, you can implement their DMRM features and all that. And it's and it's a really good point, Mr. Guma brings up. It's pretty much pointless to write anti-piracy because pirates will find their way around it. So I'm actually going to do a totally different tack on this game. I'm really hoping that people will hack this game. So I'm not going to create a modding type of thing, but I am going to make it really easy for people to make their own mods of this game. So just to give people the satisfaction of hacking a game. All right. So if the layer scale is greater than one, yeah. So Pause.x before I run this is 110. After, it's still 110. But that's probably because the layer scale is really close to 1, but just slightly above. Yeah, it's because it's 1.0002. So I'm going to turn off breakpoints, run that again. Yeah, mods are fun, right? Oh. 
Oh, wait. Let's see if the sword's here. Oh, cool. Whoa, that was weird. Okay, so I think it did the wrong. Th well, where did it do it first? Let's see that in slow motion. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn on always screen cap. That's gonna just take as many ping screenshots as it can. I'm gonna run it again and watch that in slow motion by just playing it back. See, like it went in and then back out. That was really weird. Hmm. Okay, so as it starts this effect, it's like they all swoosh in and then back out. It's really, really weird. Oh yeah, that's a good idea, right? Release your own pirated version. Yeah, it's 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 working off the right the right layer for sure. I think it's just the math that I wrote here is is probably wrong. So let's look at this sh slower. The current position of the light is accurate once it starts, um, and so if the layer scale is greater than one, it's zooming in from one to two. So it's going to go because this the actual height of the camera has gone from one to 0.5. So that means the layer scale has gone from 1 to 2.0, the inverse. So that's what layer scale's values are going to be. So if the point is less than the wind size that width, we're going to multiply by negative 1. Oh, yeah, of course, 1.0 minus layer scale, I forgot. It should be layer scale minus 1. I think if this works that'd be cool because I don't have to change the shader at all it's just using the regular math before it gets to the shader because fixing shaders takes some time a lot longer than this Yeah, it worked, but it was too much. So it's like if the layer scale is, yeah, it needs to be subtracted 0.5 or divided by 2, I think, maybe. So like layer scale is 2.0. We subtract 1. We've got 1.0. That's 1.0 times what it, sh what it should be. But this should be when, oh, yeah, this should be times 5 before we even get into that. So, yeah, I think you're right about that all. Um, Mr. Laguma, was this where you meant for me to put it before? Probably that's all we need. Oh yeah, C++. Uh, okay. Oh man, it still didn't, still went too far that time. Damn. Well, it's going in the right direction, so this is right. Wind size that width times a half. This might actually need to be a quarter.
Yeah, nice. Okay, that was it. I think what technically what this this should actually be is this should be 0.5. And then this again now at the end should be 0.5, but that's why I write a that's why I wrote a quarter there at first. So this is more accurate though. Essentially, we're having the layer scale and having the wind size. So that's doing that, and now we can apply the layer scale also to the size. So like light .get scale and also layer scale. So if layer scale is 2.0, the the size of the light is going to be twice as big. Let's see if that works. Yeah, Marungia, the reason I wasn't creating a stop point there is because this happens over time. So we're going to get like somewhere between 30 and maybe 10 frames where we're going to be seeing that data. It's going to be different values for each one of them. So it's always kind of, it's helpful to set breakpoints for things you're going to do, you're going to break on once, but things where you need to watch it over time, so like 30 times, that's not as helpful. Yeah, look at that, scale's perfect now. Awesome, now we just need to do the same thing to this other light. So the size of the light is these ones. Let's do this layer scales right here. Should be right. And that should appropriate. That should be appropriate, like pretty close to the right thing. Like I won't even have to edit the position because this is usually about the center of the screen, so I can be lazy. I think right here and just not, not mess with the, the blend center. Ah, that was the opposite of what we wanted. So this should be one over layer scale. So this is 1.0 scale x times layer scale. Okay, so, and let's turn off um, this always screen cap. See this at the full size again. Man, this is good. This was, this bug's been on my list for close to a month now. Finally glad I just did this. Wasn't that hard to fix. And it's just nice to have things polished again. Yeah, cool. We have full light in this area. This is how it should be. It's still quite bright with that. Oh, it's weird how that, that ditches out. Let's turn, let's fix that. So when it's fluxing and it's going from one opacity to another. Hmm. Well, it might be here. Yeah, this might be 0.1 and then subtract. Keep those at zero. We don't really need this whole fade layer that's on top of everything. Wow, wind's picking up. Might actually rain. That'd be great.
Beautiful. I think maybe a tiny bit less screen shake actually would be good here. Let's do that. 1.25. Do one more time. Just verify that the visuals here are cool. This whole point of this little bit of bug fixing was to make this look good. So. Yeah, it's looking good to me too, cool. It does get kind of bright when that shaft of light is getting really bright, but I think it works okay actually with it all added together. Nice, okay, that's, that's like way better than it was before. Very happy with that. All right, cool, so I'm checking that one in. I'm gonna check in what I got so far. We got this screen shake we fixed up. The whole flux for the picking up the sword. We fixed the the menu so it doesn't skip. The zoom in. The mega seed length. That's right. Oh, and we can take off the, take off that too. Okay. Hey, what's up, R2? Check us out. I'm using Vim. Although I'm still kind of clueless with Vim. I don't know how to search. Page up, page down is weird. Like trying to do control something something is, is weird. What do you do for page up, page down, R2? What's the Vim way of doing page up? Okay, so yeah, this was a big thing. When I saw my friend play yesterday, it, he had so many difficult enemies, and he was just getting his ass work. Like, this was, he was, he died, like, within two screens of the very beginning of the game. Oh, 235, Shift-G. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. Or if I went like a thousand, Shift G. Oh cool, wait. Maybe, let's do one Shift G. 10 Shift G. Oh wow, 20 Shift G. 20 Space Shift G? Okay, so if I accidentally put in a space, it doesn't work, but yeah. Cool, thank you for teaching me something. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that done a lot. Oh, you can also do, con oh, cool. What's up? Oh, cool. That's nice. Okay, cool. Wow. See, I am learning stuff. Yeah. Set number. Okay, cool. What about this, though? Here's something that happens to me quite often. If I accidentally hit... Um, Com capital Q, it goes not an editor command, and then, or what is it? I always get stuck on this one thing where if I accidentally hit something, is that maybe it's, yeah, if I hit shift Q, and then I want to do like a, I want to quit accidentally, wait a minute. I'm trying to figure out what I get stuck with.
Maybe I do shift Q enter. I don't know. I can't. I can't remember what I'm getting stuck on. Yeah, it's probably trying to record a Mac U, macro. How do I get out of that then? If I'm doing that, if I accidentally am starting to record a macro. Okay, so I'm gonna start. Um, start looking at how difficult the enemies are. In fact, I know what to do here. The world, the overworld, has just way too difficult of enemies. So I'm gonna go where it actually populates the world with enemies and turn down the, especially the amount, especially the amount of these ones, Blob Zero and Three. Those guys are freaking hard. Oh, just hit escape. Okay. All right. So yeah, I'm noticing escape is a pretty important key in Vim. Okay, so we've got possibly three Blob Zeros. So Blob 3 is incredibly difficult. This guy is like, has so many hit points, it's ridiculous. So I'm gonna turn Blob 3's hit points down. Now Blob, two, blob 0, there are way too many of these. So I'm gonna turn those down also like, maybe at minimum two of them, at maximum four even. Cause those guys will kick your ass. They're tiny, but they're they're really hard to see. Ah, oh, no worries, man. Nice. Our friend just had a baby. So cool. We're proud of him. Those people. All right. Now, also the Raz enemy. This guy. There was just way too many of these. So we've got three plus possibly five of them. That would put eight of these guys. These are like killers. So we're gonna set them to two, at most four. So like a really difficult Roz, well maybe five. Really difficult Roz room is gonna be five of them. That should really, really help that. Okay, I think that's enough difficulty fixing for these. I also want to make it so there's corridors on the overworld. First I'm going to run around on the overworld and see if that's a little bit more friendly now as I get further and deeper from the, the home screen. It should get more difficult and I'll make sure that it's not too difficult. Like put this, you know, put this in the play in the put myself in the shoes of a brand new player. Never played this game before. You know, you have no idea about how the the controls work. One thing I noticed about my friend is he 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 went and attacked every single enemy there was ever. He was always trying to attack. It didn't matter. He always wanted to clear every single screen. Here's one where there's some. It looks like there's some slightly harder enemies. These blue guys are a little harder. See, and it's just put a lot of these blobs. Yeah, okay, let's make this so. Huh. All right, so we're not we're not calling the amount factor. Hmm. So there's one way I could do this. Like I want, I want there to be able to be a ton of blobs on the on the others, on the dungeons. Thanks, Iron Scissor man. Appreciate that man. Yeah, it's been uh, 
I guess it's only been about seven months so far, but it feels like it feels like I've been doing this game my whole life. It's weird. Yeah. Okay. Let's just let's turn down. Hmm. Uh, this is kind of a, j a janky choice here, but if kind, kind equals k blob, and we're in the overworld, we're gonna change the amount factor to be half. So I can't really think of a better way to do this right now. Really, the, I guess the better way to do it would be to take the amount factor and really, really tweak that so it just it's perfect for both. But I don't know. Oh, interesting. A pool of HP that gets distributed. Really interesting interesting approach. I would really have to I would have to redo everything to kind of to do that, but I guess I wouldn't have to redo that much. But let me because I'm 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 trying to jam as fast as I can and get this alpha version out. So I love that idea, but I'm gonna I'm gonna save that for like last. Um Thanks, man. Oh, and it could only be on some enemies. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I really, really do. I think that could work a lot better than this whole, this method where it's just, you know, creating 30 of them here and one of them on all, it's all based on this amount factor and stuff. So I think for now, this is kind of, this is going to help, um, help enough that the alpha version won't be too difficult. Um, and then as I, you know, get closer to an actual beta version, I'll be, I'll consider doing that where it's, it distributes, um, based on a pool of hit points. I like that. Yeah, see now there was only two of these blue blobs on this screen. That's like a, a lot easier to deal with, especially for beginners. Oh, there was two more that were up there. They got stuck, it looks like. Yeah, there's still two more. Okay, but still that would have been like, whatever, six to eight blobs on that screen. Oh yeah, there's now four stores too on the overworld. So this store has different items like we can purchase the the fire in a, in a cube, get the jib stash for for jib. Oh yeah, here's a bomb. Or I set off a bomb last time. This is kind of a bug because the player can come and come back in this room and keep on picking up gems, but it's not that serious for the for the alpha build. Oh yeah. One thing that was really boring about the overworld is that it only put blobs. It's kind of weird, right? No, yeah, there's no experience in this game, not at all. It's a, it's a definitely a different kind of um, RPG. It's a lot like Zelda, where you make progress in the game by um, killing bosses, basically. So yeah, you can you can kind of get some ex some rewards in a sense that you're picking up items. So you get like diamonds and you get cactuses and bombs and things like that. Um, but other than that, you really, um, you really don't get it. You don't get any experience points at all. You only make progress by vanquishing bosses, essentially. K max overworld kind. All right, that's all we need to change. Max overworld kind is Roz.
What's the factor? We're using R, which is a mix of diff and random. Oh, it's totally random. It should at least be half. No wonder it wasn't was only putting blobs on the overworld. Yeah, it's just like Zelda. And that was that was a, a tough choice for me to make. I was like, you know, ah, I was so going back in my back and forth so much on whether it should be RPG like or whether it should be Zelda like. And I settled on Zelda like. Because I had just, I don't know, it just made me feel so cool to play Zelda 1 again. And it's it's my by far my favorite Zelda. Cool, alright, good. Now we have a few more interesting enemies on the overworld. This is a difficult one. I think that, okay, I'm thinking that actually the amount factor should be um, halved for all of the overworld now. Yeah. Now that you mentioned it, it is. That's probably why I did it. It's more simple. All right, see if there's less enemies there in that position we just left off from. Uh, it's not going to let me continue there. Whoops. Yeah. True. Yeah, that's why I'm hoping it's kind of interesting to play this one in the sense that they have the, um, you know, 300 million worlds they can explore. So they can go play a different, if they do get stuck in one world and they can't quite figure out how to get past it, maybe they'll try a different world. I don't know. That's one option is for players at least. Wow. Yeah, yeah, you do. You do have to play your own game, and you have to play it a lot. Alright, good. Yeah, so now we only have three guys on this screen. That's a lot more friendly for the overworld. Let's see if there's a bomb place right there. Nope. Oh, there's a bomb right there. Cool, I had a feeling there was a bomb on this screen. Nice. Okay. Cool, 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 man. Yeah, that is a problem. That's why it's so good to watch other people play. Which was a blessing last night to have my friend over and just watch him play it.
Yeah, totally. I agree. I agree. Some hold hand holding is kind of maybe cool at first, but like too much, and it's not as much of an adventure. It's you don't feel as rewarded as a player, you know, that you found something out. Like that's what's so great about games in the old days is that we had to freaking figure that stuff out. And sometimes Nintendo Power didn't even tell us what it, you know. Yeah, I know. It's going to get a lot better. Yeah. Um, I wanted to put just something in the alpha build for now with the gems. So that's why it's just there's something there. Um, but yeah, it's not, I'm not trying to make it perfect just yet. So the next thing I want to do is put corridors in the overworld. And these are going to be sections of the overworld that do not have um, any... Um, like any foes at all. So I'm going to do a number of over, over, um, no, I'll do actually, yeah, I can do this in the maze. <clears throat> yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks. I'll remember that when I get to that point. Cause yeah, I think the same thing. doesn't look that appealing to get. Okay. So we got this function that I just wrote last night. That's really cool for. Um, placing different things on the map farther, like far enough apart from each other. So last night I wrote this function basically that, like, it puts a store um, as close as it can to the home, or you know, within reason, close to the home, and then it puts another store, but uh, the the next store has to be far enough away from the first store. So you can see it put a store here, a store there, and a store there. So this function is pretty neat. I can use this that to put corridors into the overworld. So I'm going to do get possible flags locations. Um, the amount, I'm going to do size x times size y. On perhaps so, I want there to be maybe four, four to six, maybe like five corridors when there's sixteen by eight. So if it's one hundred twenty-eight screens, let's say six of them are gonna be. So if we do that and then do one over x, this is the percentage of screens that should be corridors. So size X times size Y times this. That's how many flight, that's how many corridors we want. Um, so for a preview build, it's going to be smaller. So let's we multiply that by the preview build screen size. Um, what's that? Six by four, six by four is 24. So we're gonna have one corridor area on this level. <clears throat> oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a lot of ideas for these secrets too. Like some of them will be full of story some of them will be full of um, actual really important items. One of them is going to be an actual entire level. So you get into one of the dungeons that way. So, so that it kind of keeps you guessing as well. So when you're going into a secret, you don't really know, or you're not going to know um, what you're going to get inside it. So that, that should make it hopefully more interesting to find them. So there, we should have a corridor now. Maybe a few of them, or one of them at least. Now when we go and draw the maze, I'm gonna draw it as Um, 
is if it's a corridor Now we need to get this here. So if this get flags x y and k flag corridor, we're going to do a plus sign. There. <clears throat> No, it's not quite. Yeah, it's that's what I'm. Yeah, exactly. It's not quite that because exactly what you said there. I'm gonna make them different screens. So like in the in the dungeons, I don't know if you've seen that yet, but in the dungeons, they're totally different screens where they're just a single corridor and they're not shaped like the other ones. So I'm gonna think it's gonna be similar to that for these kind of um, screens. Eventually, right now, all I'm gonna do is turn off enemies on that screen, but eventually, I will do a totally different kind of pattern. It's procedurally generated for these kind of um, screens. Was this one? It's two spaces. All right. There, so this shouldn't do anything to the actual overworld yet, but I'll be able to see that it placed one. Okay, it worked for part of it. So I placed it here and messed up the bottom. Oh, that needs to be plus two spaces. All right, this is this just needs to be F. Let me keep this simpler. All right, so this is good to have this reworked. 
So it just shows clearly where the corridors are. Always helps to have good debugging visualizations. Great. We've got a corridor right there. Now I'm going to turn on a turn off preview build so we get a bigger world and see if it creates a few more of these kind of screens. And then also I'm going to make it so it doesn't create any enemies. Okay, so with the bigger world, here's like a regular size world. There's a corridor, there's a corridor, here's a corridor, here's a corridor, here's another one. Oh, there's one too. What would a twelfth be? If we were to do a twelfth, then it would, or we could just scale it round up. Hmm. One divided by twelve times 128, we would have like 11 different screens versus six. It's a lot more. Yeah, so we do, we'll just, we'll just round up. So maze, when it's creating these corridors, round this one up, CLF. There, so now if it's like 1.1, it's going to create two corridors if it's like 6.1 or whatever it'll create seven of them cool so there shouldn't be any foes right there straight up and then to the right of the the beginning screen Let's see how this, this works out. So this screen, here's a normal screen, some enemies. Here we have a screen with absolutely no enemies. Cool. This is really what I wanted. This is it, first of all, for them to look a little bit differently, but also for, you know, primarily the main reason is that it just, there should be some screens on the overworld where there's no enemies at all. And that's primarily to keep it easier for new players. Okay, good. We're back to this screen. There's some foes. Some foes on this one. And this one should be a, yeah, this one's a corridor as well. Good. That works. I'm going to put this back to preview mode. Cross that off the list, corridors in the overworld. Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. There's got to be a few of these corridors for sure.
here's back to the smaller world. Let's make sure there are at least two corridors now. Yeah, good. We got one here and one there. And we can verify it quite easily by just going two screens to the right or the left. All right. Cool. Good, good, good. Let's check this one in too. What's up, Burke Miller? This is my main job. You're seeing me do it. I make this game. It's called Songbringer. And at first I started this off and was making no money. It was barely scraping by. And I launched a Kickstarter for it after four months of developing this game. And the Kickstarter succeeded, so that's what enables me to continue making this full-time. And it's all thanks to many, many amazing souls from Kickstarter and also from this live stream. So I do this full time about eight to 10 hours a day, six or seven days a week. So this is the one where um, it's got corridors on the overworld. Okay, next thing, the cactus didn't have any colors. And also, all items needed to be like have more flashiness, a little bit more flashiness. So it's because, especially when you were playing it on a TV last night, it was a lot smaller. You know, even a, even a somewhat big sized TV, it's going to be way smaller than it usually than it is when you're way you know you're like up close and personal with this with a laptop or a desktop screen or whatever. So the cactus color is right in here. Color for cactus. Oh yeah, that's why it's because it's white. Yes, yeah. What's up, Jader Vernanda? Yes, it's coming out either January, February, or March of 2016. So about six months from now, it's coming out on Steam. So it's coming out on Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's already been greenlit. Um, the page is coming up on Steam probably tonight. And I'm releasing the alpha version for it tonight, also to the Kickstarter backers who backed at a high enough level. So, um, yes, I do the pixel art, I do the music as well, and I do the sound effects, I do everything. So, it's a solo, one man game. The cactus is probably going to be like a greenish color. Let's give it the color that it, that cactus actually is. HUD, I'm looking for HUD. I gotta open it. Man, I go through a lot of files in Photoshop. Never seems to have my the file I would last wanted. So here's this sort of peyote green. 140, 160, 161. And if I put that really bright, that's what I want the color to actually come out like. Pretty bright. 200, 229, 230. All right, so now at least it will have a glow, but I want this glow for items to be a lot more, a lot brighter. So um, when it creates an item, it does this action to make it glow. Yeah, it scales by on. Oh, what makes it additive? Uh. Yeah, let's make this scale just a lot bigger, like 1.5. See how that turns out with them. Just trying to make it more noticeable. So if I stand like really far back from the screen, or if you're playing on a controller, or you're playing with, on the desktop, you want to be able to see that an item is dropped on the ground. It's kind of obvious that there's something there you that looks delicious to pick up.
Still not bright enough. I think the opacity needs to be really increased. Yeah, so we got a default opacity of 66. Uh, no, Jader, this is not my first foray. I've been a game developer for 20 years now. I actually published games um, a long, long time. I didn't publish games, but I, I made games that got published back in the 90s. And um, also, during my 2000s, I didn't really make games. So yeah, I've been a game developer for 20 years, but 10 of them I was trying to pursue making music mostly. And it didn't really work out for me. So I came back to games about five years ago. Yeah, that's a good idea, Jackal Gamer. A sparkle? Yeah, I could give it some sparks somehow. Um, but I think some opacity at first would be a good move here. Like a diamond. Let's turn off all of this right here. I've already got the some frames for sparks. Hmm. I'm trying to think of how I would do that. I could add another sprite. Uh, what's up, Dio? Uh, yeah, this game is gonna cost about fifteen bucks, and that includes the album. Fifteen or sixteen bucks. So you get not only the um, the digital album, but the the game. And that's Windows, Mac, Linux. You can get it either DRM, free, or Steam. Steam is going to be the primary platform for it. So. so that's a lot better with the brighter. You can tell. You can definitely tell there's something valuable we picked up now. But let's try some sparks too. Let's try a mix of both techniques. Like, first of all, the opacity being like halfway, so 96 instead of. 128, and then we'll add some sparks as well. Cool. <clears throat> All right, so we'll add um, a sparkle sprite. We've got several different frames for these. Um, let me look up what the heck they are again. Oh, sparks. Sparks zero through eight. I'm not sure if I use them all or not. Yeah, okay, we do. All right, so this is what we need. An experienced programmer to pick up C++. Man, uh, what experience do you have already? Oh, okay, you already know a lot of C++? Oh, well, the, yes, I do have an, uh, some... Oh, man, what's it called? Oh, it's been so long. Is it, is it C++ design patterns? I know this author. If I can find this right author. If anybody's out here on the stream and you're like, you want to shout out, shout, like, comment. I know there's some famous book about C++ where it's talking about design patterns. And I'm trying to think of the name of it. I got it like, I got it like in the early 2000s, and it was a really, really great run for taking my C++ skills like to the next level for sure. And it was this this one author. He was so distinct. I 
I would know the cover of it too. It's like it's not Bjorn Struis up. It's not any of those. No, I don't think it was that one. Dio, yeah, I, I always stand up, pretty much. I, I do sit down, but uh, I don't get tired for most of the day. So I do about half the day standing, half the day not standing. And so put it kind of, there it is, effective C++. Scott Myers. This is the one. This is a really great book. Yeah. Scott Myers. Anything anything by Scott Myers is going to be a good book. And I think Effective C++ is like the first one in a series of two or three books. It's really, really good. <clears throat> okay, so back to creating some sparks. Does it like that? Did I put a bug in here somewhere? R. That's the one. It doesn't like R, of course. So the int R equals this, get ran. This better not be a, yeah, this can't be a static method. It's a, it's a member. So the X position, back to P. There it is, R, X, R, Y. R, X, R, Y. There. So now we can have a sprite that's um <clears throat> I mean yeah, I would definitely recommend Coco's 2DX myself. I mean, it's really a subjective thing, like but I wouldn't recommend it if you're trying to do a 3D game. If you want to do a 3D game, I would definitely recommend either Unreal or um or Unity, but probably Unreal because it's C plus plus. And it just seems like it's a higher quality engine to me. I, I haven't used Unreal actually, but I have used Unity. And Unity just didn't feel that great to me, but that's solid. But, you know, it's just a matter of opinion. So yeah, if you're if you're into open source and you really love, you know, if you really love open source and you love like having the control over your whole engine and be able to change anything and not having to worry about a license to some company and not having to pay them something, all that, that BS, Coco Studio X is a rad engine to use in my opinion. Um, and if you're going to use Coco's 2DX, I definitely recommend checking out Rapid Game, which is a tool I built to um, pre-build all of Coco's 2DX libraries for you, so you never have to build them twice. And if you just check out this video here on Rapid Game's page, it kind of gives you the, the lowdown. And basically, that's going to give you Coco's 2DX a lot faster than going trying to go get it yourself and figure out how to build it and all that. So I recommend that. <clears throat> well, let's see if there's even a spark. So we added one single sparkle frame when it creates an item. So we're using we're gonna use both techniques here, trying a sparkle and also trying a little bit more opacity. I'm not seeing any sparks at all. OK. 
Okay, I'll set a breakpoint and try and figure out what's up. Hi, Wolf. It's going great, man. I'm working on a, a list of like 30 new bugs I found since last night from watching my friend play. My friend played, and it was really great to just kind of watch him play and take notes the entire time. So I found a lot of things needed to be edited, and I got, I'm got i totally under the gun as far as time goes because I need to get this done by tomorrow because that's when the alpha version has to go out because I'm going on vacation the next day. And I promised everybody I'd have the um, this alpha build by... July. Wait, did I promise them July or June? Hmm. Anyways. Oh, cool. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad. Um, I'm glad. Uh, that got out there. So, yeah, I definitely recommend it. Scott Myers is a great. He's a great author, and he really, really has an excellent like grasp of how to do C plus plus like best practices you know he's like really really knows his stuff oh wow rx is 1300 no wonder <laughs> okay here's one big problem with this method this should be get vec 2x and this should be get vec 2y Man, I'm thirsty. I gotta get a drink of water. That should help. I wonder if it'll actually fix the spark though. <clears throat> What's up, Chris is so slod. Why are you confused, man? I'm going to step into this method, step out of that method, step into this method. Okay, so the frame we're looking at is null, of course, and we got sparks 8, so it should have a sparks 8. Oh, well, what, 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 what's your passion, man? What are you excited about? What excites you? Obviously, typing doesn't excite you, but code is a lot more exciting than just typing. But what is it that truly excites you? Does art excite you? Does going outside and climbing mountains excite you? Would you rather go scuba diving? I mean, what is it that, that really, really excites you, man? What is your anti-meh? Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, Kogo City used to be cool, and then yeah, and then it and it just got like to the point where they stopped updating it and stuff. So Kogo City X is the, now the thing. Uh, Shashwap, it's Kogo City X. <clears throat> yeah, Coco Studio X is C++. Yep, it's, you write your game entirely in C++, and then you can port it to many platforms. Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, Blackberry, Windows Phone, and I think there's more. Okay, so now we're creating this Sparks 8. Let's see if it can successfully create the sprite and all that. Okay, does it get the frame? Oh yeah, it loads the frame. All right, so we should be good to go. Sets alias, texture parameters, sets the position, anchor, color. Let's step out of this method. Maybe it's working now, let's see. Oh yeah, I think I saw some sparkly stuff there. Oh yeah, I see some sparks for sure. They're just sitting there in the same position, so that's why they look weird. Hello, 
Bones Gunny. Okay, so we need to do something to these sparks. Actually, let's do let's do the whole health system create sparks. For um, what entity? This entity. Okay, and then we can do the same thing here for use this guy E source. Um, this is going to be the direction that it flies from. So source will have to probably do some random. And we can do like I don't know. For start, we'll start at zero. That ought to make some sparks actually fly off of the sprite. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I do. I use Ableton for making music. Ableton Live 8. I don't have, I don't have 9 yet because I, I'm boycotting 9 because I paid like 500 bucks for the sweet version of 8. And, um, yeah, they want me to upgrade and pay another, like, three or four hundred bucks or whatever for nine. It's like, dude, it's too much, and eight already works good. And this E is used everywhere. E.render.sprite. Okay, so this should make some sparks fly off when the when the item is created. Hmm, I didn't see any there. Oh, he appeared at the. He appeared in the bottom left of the screen. That's why. Why are you appearing in the bottom left of the screen? The source doesn't have to be the position, does it? I know, right? Jump scares are scary. Yeah, I hope you just saw it right there. I know, right? I think they're it's cheaper now. No, I do not have a dev kit for the consoles. And I don't know whether for sure it will actually come out on um, PlayStation 4 and Xbox. But I do, I have heard through the grapevine that Coco Studio X will soon be supporting PlayStation 4 and Xbox One in Coco Studio X version 3 or 3.9 or 4.0, or something like that. Pretty soon they're going to be supporting those platforms. I wasn't paying attention if this actually created those sprites at the bottom or what. Yeah, it's creating at the bottom. Oh man, this is like a bug. Okay, you know what? I'm not going to worry about this. I'm going to put this on my bug list and get to this later because this is taking too much time. 
um, health system or create item sparks are in bottom left. That's a bug. We'll fix that later. For now, I think I liked it at about 90 or so. Let's look at the, this overall opacity. <clears throat> So making games is your passion. Ah. Well, Chris Slot, my advice to you would be to try them all, and I wouldn't I wouldn't make a decision until you've tried them all pretty thoroughly. You know, I would give it three to six months if you if you have that much time. I would at least give it three to six months of trying to make art and making the kind of art that you really, really like, and also trying to make code for a game. And also, I would make music too. If you, you know, if you're gonna throw them all in there, throw in all those skills and just try them all and see which one you're digging. That's my advice. Yeah, I love making. I love making games in Xcode. Xcode is my favorite IDE so far, ever. true right yeah you're you know the only thing you're gonna lose out on is time so if you love doing it the time is not wasted so okay um, I want to make sure these are sine waves Yeah, let's do an E sign in and out on both these scale bys. I think I'm gonna go a little higher on how big it, these scales can actually get. Nice, cool. Yeah, I use Visual Studio as well for compiling the Windows version, of course. Um, but I definitely prefer Xcode. Well, maybe, probably just because I'm used to it more. I mean, I've used Visual Studio in the past. We're talking like in the 90s, in the early 2000s. And so I, I was, you know, somewhat familiar with it before. So it's kind of the same, it's kind of the same thing still today. Yeah, there we go with that sine wave. It really gives it this like breathing, natural feeling. Cool. And if I combine that with eating a cactus. Yeah. Pretty trippy. Cool. Okay, that's a lot better. It's better than it was for before, for sure. I'm going to take away all this special code. Actually, we could have just gone. Yeah, capacity. It's like, that's what it would have been like. But I'm, I think I like it like this. For now, it just um, does these kind of sine waves. Yeah. True. Game Maker Studio. Yeah, that's a great suggestion for Chris Slaud. Game Maker Studio. Okay, um, what's the next on the list? Cactus quantity, that's right. I don't know how to do this refill crash right now, so I'm gonna put this at the end of my list. So I wanna see the cactus quantities instead of keys. I'm 
we're gonna have some functions for this. There's like set bombs or whatever, static void. So we're gonna have a set cacti. Now, when we create the actual sprites for the HUD, we need one more label for the cacti. Uh, I gotta look up what's. Oh, I can just do it quickly here. Um, look at the cacti. See what sprite frame. It's just call it cactus. Cool. I love simple names, simple things. But still, I have to look everything up. So doesn't always work out. So I'm gonna turn off the HUD key and all the key label key label as well. So all we're gonna have now is a cactus, the same exact position, and Oh, cool. That's really um, a lot simpler than it than I thought it would be. So we got the cacti label created, same exact kind of thing, same exact position as the key label. And it should it should be good. To, oh, what the heck? Did Xcode crash? Whoa. I don't know what's going on. Never seen my system do that before. Okay. So now we got the cactus. Oh, we need to make sure that set keys, for example. system when we pick up a key you set the keys when we pick up a cactus we want to set the cactus is There we go. Okay, so now we should have a system of this set up. I know, gremlins, man. Gremlins are inside my laptop today. All right. Nice. Okay, we've got zero cactuses right now. Is that correct? Whoops.
No, we got cactuses. We need to set cactuses at the beginning of the game. Oh, Ponji, what's up, man? Yeah. I know, right? It's weird that not that many people use Macs to make games, but I, I wouldn't use anything else myself. Um, but yeah, it's largely a matter of opinion, of course. What do you prefer? Personally, I prefer a system that has a Unix backend, so either Linux or Mac. Oh, right, yeah. A lot of games are mobile. Here. Eat a gear that has. Okay. Item cactus. How long have I been streaming? Yeah, I gotta get going soon. There's somebody coming by to drop off some stuff for us. Um, and besides, I'm also almost at two hours here, so I'm probably gonna ch cut the stream short about now. Oh, oops. I made a mistake there. I called set keys twice. This should be set cacti. So what I did there is I made it so I can either call set keys or set cacti, even though it doesn't have a keys label anymore. Cool. Yeah, so we got six cactuses. Oops. All right, so I want to go use the cactus to see what it looks like. How many will it cost? What do you mean? You mean how many dollars will this game cost? Yeah. Okay, so if I use a cactus here, wait. Oh yeah, it's because I had that equipped. All right, so one more thing, I need to make sure when I use a cactus, So is it input system? Oh, I'm in the wrong file, no wonder. There it is. Use item, drop item, use item teleport, use item cactus. There it is. Oh, check that out. I already had that. Another thing I'm going to do with the game is make it so when you use a cactus, you got this special, some kind of special power. Yeah, true. They did have a lot better hardware. I know, they've made a lot of changes. Yeah, I agree. It's like ever since they lost Steve. But even before that, I guess they were making these kind of choices. All right, good. So we've got five cactuses now. If I eat another one, down to four. Cool. I just noticed the transitions work again. This is looking good. All right, good. Oh yeah, I know, especially if you're worldwide. Yeah. If you're worldwide, Macs are crazy expensive. Here they're kind of reasonable now. They're actually like only a thousand bucks for a Mac Pro or MacBook Pro, which is, you know, half the price of what they were five or so years ago. Yeah, I know. Australia, Europe, all those places, you're not getting not getting those Apple Apple prices that we get here in the States, which kind of sucks. Whoa. 
All right, you guys. So, um, yeah, I got a hell of a lot more stuff to do tonight. Um, but how many, let's see how many things that I get done today. I got 20 down to 24. So that means I got about five bugs fixed during this stream. I got five of them fixed in the morning. I'll probably be able to get five to 10 more fixed tonight, maybe 10 more the next day. So maybe 20, you know, I'll probably, I'll probably whittle down this list to like, you know, maybe half of them are gone by the time I release the alpha version. But yeah, I got a hell of a lot of work to do to get this done. I'm kind of in, I'm in a crunch mode right now. Definitely feeling the pressure, but, um, yeah, so I'll be back tomorrow. I'll stream tomorrow. Um, and yeah, that's it for today's stream. Thanks again for watching. And, um, I always appreciate hanging out with you guys.